Okay, that's a few. Great. Glad that you're here. So let's start. So what we're going to talk about today is the most critical part of your e-commerce success, which is the payment experience of your customers, or in a broader context, the shopping experience and how you should create your own payment ecosystem reflecting your customers' expectations. If we look at this old screenshot, it's a screenshot of the Amazon checkout from roughly 18, 19 years ago, so quite a while. Um, and the first glimpse, it, it doesn't really look appealing, right? And you possibly would not buy anything from that site today. That was actually at a time where they were still just selling books, DVDs, and CDs. But if you look carefully, you see on the right upper corner that even at that time, they already understood one of the most crucial parts that we now call the customer-centric experience to have an account functionality where you could eventually um, save your shipping address, your payment credentials, and access your shopping history. So that was already in the past. This is how it is looking today, and this is how it's all familiar. Um, actually, if you look at it from a very abstract point of view, it's, it's still quite similar to what they did 18, 19 years ago. You just have a little bit more uh, core functionalities um, around the core um, shopping experience, but there's one new innovation that's helped them to be successful on a global scale, and this is actually this feature, the one-click, and this is something they introduced as one of the first marketplaces in the world, and it solidified their e-commerce success because it simplified and it automatized a part of the shopping experience. And what we can take from that is that whenever there's the possibility to reduce and to simplify and to automatize the shopping experience for your customers, there's a benefit for him to stay and to come again to shop. The question that we will also tackle today is how will it look tomorrow? How does it look today? How will it look tomorrow? And also the question, how can I, as a company, be ready for this change of tomorrow and to apply new payment innovations in your own technological systems? Because what we know as a fact is that e-commerce is a very fast moving space. There is new business models coming up um, by the minutes. There is a lot of disruptions. There's a lot of innovation. And with that fast-moving e-commerce space, there is a lot of competition. And it is not easy to, co to compete with new business models or other competitors um, on a daily basis, because the customer itself is also, in a, in a way, empowered that he can actually get information easily and have a transparency throughout the internet and compare different offers. So it's all about that experience that your company is capable to deliver, to deliver to your customers. On the other side, in order to be capable to compete, you also have to understand what we call the um, quality of analysis of your customers' expectations and demands and the quality of actions that you take to meet your customers' demands. Because in the end, it's a money game, and it's a fast-growing market internationally. What we see is that the digitalization process is transforming the analog world. Things that um, were paid by cash or other, um, let's say, analog shopping experience that we had are now moving to the digital, to the digital space and also enabling new sales channels and new um, shopping experiences. And you want to be a part of that. And the way you can be a part of that is to introduce innovative ways to interact with your customers. On a payment experience point of view, it means you have to offer the right payment methods, you have to have the right providers in your portfolio, you have to have smooth and um, friction-free payment experience on a daily basis and throughout all your channels. So one of the questions is, how can you rise to the challenge? And how can you transform your organization, take the risk, and how can you introduce new tools? 
A bad example in the past is how Coca-Cola did it. I think you're maybe all familiar with this example. They tried to innovate but failed epically by introducing a Coke that was a bit sweeter than the old one in order to tackle their competition. That cost them actually um, quite an amount of their brand image, but it also tells us a very simple story. You cannot always make something better that you already have. You also have to be able to change. You have to integrate new innovations into your business and be um, aware of what is going on around you. Because if we look at the customer of today, then we see that um, a lot of the interaction that we see on a day-to-day -day base has changed fundamentally. And, it's, uh, and it has a lot to do with that little device that we all have in our pockets. Um, it's either the phone or it's a tablet. And um, the more older version, of course, the PC. But um, as a customer, I'm always connected. And I can buy a lot of things on my mobile device anywhere, anytime, through different channels, um, on different sites, and in also different e-commerce contexts. And this is something that is very important, um, because if we look back on the Amazon checkout page, this is like the old world. You have that big um, browser page where you can select some products. It's more like the classic e-commerce experience, and you purchase something, you check out, and you get it delivered. But what we see is that e-commerce is shifting from that classic e-commerce context to a very personalized context where people um, pay in a specific environment or situation for something they immediately need. And this also brings a challenge towards the payments process because if you're now in the train or if you're on the bus or even strolling in the streets or you're even in the plane, you don't want to pull out your wallet um, from the overhead compartment or somewhere else and type in a credit card credentials and you want that payment experience to be very smooth and very fast. In the best case, you don't really want to, um, you don't really want to do anything with that because you have done it so many times before. Um, the plane is actually a very new e-commerce context because the plane has been an offline space for a very long time. Um, we as a company introduced actually a technology that enables in-flight payments so that you can actually purchase, um, let's say, commercial goods on the plane that have a higher value because you, are, you have access to the internet, but you can also book um, something so for an in the event ticket at your final destination. So if you think about it a bit longer, you realize that uh, the new sales channels that are coming up have a huge um, capacity for your business to participate in. It's just a matter of how you can access it and what you need in order to be ready for that. Because in the end, it's everything is about mobility. I mean, we hear that also on the event a lot, um, mobile first and uh, mobile only. Uh, this is true to a certain extent because it has simply become a crucial part of our everyday lives. And so e-commerce will also shift to that and um, manifestate in that, and you will see a lot of um, complexities linked to payments are actually happening around this shopping experience, and, and this is where you have to be a part of. So the question is, are you ready? That's a simple question. And what do you need to be ready? And this is what we're going to speak about today, because in the end, I mean, these are nice pictures, but the question is, okay, what does it mean for you as a company to be ready? What do you have right now? How does your shopping experience look like for your customer? And um, what can you maybe change in order to improve it and to be competitive in that very competitive um, environment? So this is what I would like to speak with you about today. It's um, about the payments world and also how we see it, what we have learned from the past, and what your company can um, achieve in taking payment as a topic more seriously in the future. Because let me tell you one thing, payment has become something really fancy. And um, it's not just about typing in your credentials, it's about having that experience in the app where you just have to click one button or you have to swipe or you even have contactless payment where you don't even have to think about anything anymore. 
And, and this creates so much opportunity, so much uh, possibility for you that you have to um, react to that. And uh, one part is next generation payments. So there's a big world around that phrase, next generation payments, uh, because there's two sides in payments. There is the payment market with all the providers, and there is the payment experience or the shopping experience of your end customer. And sometimes these two worlds can be very much different from each other, and something in the middle has to solve that friction and bring both parties together so you can guarantee a smooth experience throughout the process. If we look at it historically, what we see is that, that payment has been sometimes underestimated and being treated um, as a system that sometimes needs an update but not a fundamental change. And it led simply to legacy systems where your company on top would integrate towards all the payment providers in the market, sometimes um, to alternative payment providers, to PSPs, uh, to wallets, also to banks directly, or even to risk and scoring providers. And it meant for you as a business to be able to abstract all these integrations, because in the end, on the payment page, you want to enable your end customer to pay um, or to take the right decision so he doesn't have a frustrating experience. Luckily, the payment market reacted a bit over the past years because the PSPs started to aggregate parts of the payment ecosystem. And they did it quite well because we can see there's a lot of successful PSPs out there. So what a PSP, in our understanding, does is he serves different verticals in certain regions. So he aggregates um, the contractual part. You have one contract, you get everything out of one box, and you get access to a couple of uh, payment providers and methods that you can use out of the box um, throughout one integration. But if you are now an internationalize, uh, internationalizing company that has to operate on a global scale in different markets where there is frictions between markets, you're facing the exact same complexity as you had before in the time where you would integrate uh, different or simply all providers yourself. So just to sum up this um, message here is that what we see here is that you start to integrate directly again to the providers because maybe some of the methods that are new are not supported by the PSP and you would find yourself again in in the complexity of maintaining all these integrations and um, creating still a nice look and feel and customer experience. There is a way to solve that, and it's done by our company, which is Optile. What we did is we uh, realized um, a setup where we act as a technical aggregator for payments worldwide. So what it simply means is that the technical abstraction that was previously on your side, where you would have to integrate and maintain um, the different integrations towards the providers and also mirror them in the checkout page, is now done entirely by our platform. And the simple logic behind it is that we translate all the different languages to all the different providers into one unified language that we speak with our uh, clients in that case, your company, on a technical level. The brilliant um, innovation here is that we call it implement once. So even if you want to extend your payment portfolio at one point and you want to add a new PSP or a new provider, you don't have to change anything in that initial integration. And it is so smooth that even the payment page is dynamically created, so each customer basically has its own payment page to select on payment methods, uh, both on mobile and on web. And this makes payment a much more um, uh, fun uh, product in itself because you don't have to deal with that legacy technology anymore and you can flexibly, independently uh, manage your own payment portfolio, also bench performance of the providers and actually understand what is happening on a very granular level. And one of the underlying logics of this is the open API world. So we maybe had heard this already um, on the fair, but uh, one fundamental 
change in system technology is that it uh, is moving from um, a solid system towards an open microservice system so that you as a company can pick and choose different services that you need but you're not essentially everything because some things might be obsolete and this is the same idea with payments you should be able to exchange parts of your payment portfolio very easily without thinking about um, if, you are, if you want to integrate a new provider, then make it a business case um, and getting it passed and uh, allocating resources. It should be done in a much more simple way. And one solution is that you have a platform that does this job for you, so you can actually focus on your core competencies um, in payments. This is also a very interesting one, uh, interesting picture, because it depicts a lot that we see going on um, in the market um, with a couple of, um, um, of companies. They sometimes try to be very busy, but only for the sake of work, but not thinking about what am I actually doing? Am I being effective right now, or am I just trying to be busy uh, to achieve something that might be architecturally impossible? And by simply um, looking around and, and thinking about what could we change, how could we change the organization, how could we change the technology, there is possibilities to make that a bit uh, more easy and to get help and support um, and with the payment systems. So if we talk finally about the payment experience itself, what we believe that is going to be the new way of paying online is that the need for you as a customer to enter your payment credentials will be minimized by every shopping experience. A product that we defined is called OptileX, which is, in the end, a system that allows um, you as a customer to purchase multiple goods from multiple merchants and process transactions with different payment providers in one big ecosystem. So to give it a bit more context, it could mean that if you, for example, buy a ticket um, at Lufthansa and you put in your credentials for the first time and you accept to save them, then throughout your journey, you might want to add a rental car, maybe at six, or you want to book a hotel, or you want to make um, a ticket reservation where you have to pre-authorize an amount of money uh, to go there. And these all are now isolated payment stations where you would have to go on the website and you would have to enter um, your payment credentials. But with the new solution, you already entered the payment credentials at Lufthansa buying your ticket. And in the next step, if you would, for example, go to Sixth and rent a car, you could, with our product, retrieve the information that you entered for your credit card or for PayPal or another method at Lufthansa to pay for that car that you want to rent. And the same applies then for the hotel and also for, let's say, a ticket reseller on the internet. And this is a whole new way of doing cross-channel sales and also to do affiliate sales and in the same time, a win-win situation because you can offer your end customer a one-click journey throughout the whole journey. And this is something very brilliant and very simple, and it is possible right now, and you don't even have to integrate a lot for that. And that's the sweet part of it. So if I, as a big company, have an ecosystem of partners that naturally I would like to collaborate with and do maybe affiliate sales and promote the products and increase also my ancillary revenue, then I can use that to offer my customers more value for the same um, process with a better experience. And this is what we did with OptileX. I hope that you enjoyed it, and if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask. I'm happy to, to answer.